Magic Ears possibilities. Only 24? Photographs like a million? Consolidated does not make horse operas. Why should we test a cowboy? We don't have to use him as a cowboy. He might be good leading man material. Hollywood needs some new blood. What are we giving the boy, a blood test? Look at that hair, Mr. Gilbert. And the teeth. They're real. Hair, teeth. He's still a cowboy. Have you by any chance heard him talk, Mr. Gregory? Oh, he can talk all right. I had him on the phone long distance. You had him on the phone? You're a casting director, Mr. Gregory, not a talent scout. Remember that. Take it easy. This wasn't my idea. Oh, Mr. Johnson. That's right, Mr. Phineas Johnson. He's been going to Rodeo's lately. Looks like we're in for some new discoveries. We are, if you don't stop it. Well, what can I do? I'm only the producer here. He owns the studio. He owns all of us. Him and that bank of his. Well, let's make the best of it. Where is this new Western discovery? He's due here sometime today. Hi, sir. Come on, Lank. Just a minute. Where do you think you're going? We're like Garrett. Oh, you are, are you? Uh-huh. I mean, he is. Oh, make up your mind. Who is Lank Garrett? I am. We're here to have a test made. A test of what? A test of him. He's, he's going to be a star. Oh, he is, is he? Uh-huh, and so is Ethel. Oh, she is? Uh-huh. Who's Ethel? Why, that's my Palomino. She's right here. You want to meet her? No. Okay. <laughs> Pretty, ain't she? Well, I guess I've seen about everything now. Come on, Skeeter, we've got to get out of here. See you later, pal. Do you mind closing the gate for us, pal? Who said you're going in? Why, Mr. Johnson invited us. We've got a letter from him. Mr. Johnson, eh? Yeah, Mr. Johnson, you know, the head of your company. Where is the letter? I got it right here in my pocket. Here it is. No, that ain't it. I put it in my pocket. Just what I thought. Come on, get this pack train out of here. Ah, uh, <laughs> I knew I had it someplace. See, Lane Garrett, Johnson, just like, just like I told you. Well, this is different. Drive right in, Mr. Garrett. Uh, go to the casting office. You know where the casting office is? No. Well, you go down this street till you come to a yellow bungalow. And then, well, you can just ask anybody. Well, I'm glad you made up your mind. Yeah! Watch more cowboys? No, indeed. Mm, where'd you get her, Earl Carroll's? No, but could be. Not bad. Not bad from this angle, either. Yeah? Stage nine calling. Thank you. Hello. Yeah, Bob, this is Gilbert. Oh, you don't say. Well, what am I supposed to do? Why can't you handle these things? All right, relax. I'll get him over there right away. It's Roy Croft again. They want Johnson on stage nine. Crystal Wayne has blown her top. Oh, Crystal Wayne. What's the trouble this time? Who knows? That makes 15 tantrums for Miss Wayne. She'll top her own record in this picture. I don't know why we put up with that girl. Couldn't be that our pictures net a half a million each. Couldn't be she pays our salaries. Couldn't be... Why don't you stop? We can thank our lucky stars for Phineas. He's the only guy who can handle her. All I want to know is how long is it going to take to fix this thing? It'll take at least a half a day to fix it. When she rips him off, she really rips him off. Well, get started on it. All right, keep it quiet, please. Now, look, Crystal, the dress will be changed. I'll cut out the close-up of Don Courtney. The writers are changing the dialogue, and you don't have to die in the last scene. I'll fix that up somehow. Now, if we do all that, don't you think you can go on with Don Courtney? Now, what do you say, Crystal? Now, what do I say? Just what I said before. No! Quiet, everyone. Quiet. 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 Quiet!
I want the world to know that Crystal Wayne is sick of being kicked around. Sick of the rags they give her to wear and the lines they give her to read. What am I, anyway? My rent was paid, I tell her. They either get me another leading man or I won't go through with the picture. I don't have to work with Don Courtney. Well, what's the matter with Don Courtney? Look at him. Then you tell me. Me, 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 me. Me, 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 me. But he's just conscientious, Crystal. What, that fugitive from a burlesque show? Now, honey... Don't you honey me. If Mr. Johnson were here, I wouldn't be treated like this. Well, he's on his way over. How could he be? He's at the city hall. Well, the way you were yelling, he probably heard you. Well, I don't want to see him here. Send him to my room. Murphy, get my makeup case. We're leaving. Me, 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 me. Oh, me, 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 me. You want the me, Miss Crystal? Yes, I want you, Murphy. Sure is a big place. Looks like we'll never find that casting office. Why don't you ask somebody like that guy at the gate said? Ask her. Hey, miss. Pardon me, Palomino. Could you tell me where the casting office is? Just who do you think you're addressing? My mistake, miss. You look like you worked here. What was that he called me? A palomino. What's that? A horse. A big horse. A horse? Well, a volant. Friendly little thing, isn't she? Uh-huh. There's a filly that would really take some handling. Say, Lane, ain't that Mr. Johnson coming there? Yeah, that's him. Hi there, Mr. Johnson. Well, 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 Lang Garrett. So you finally got here, huh? Well, that's fine. Say, hey, you're looking good. Thanks. You remember Skeeter? Sure. How are you? Everything all right? Just fine, sir. Well, are you all set for the test, Lank? Been to the casting office yet? We were just trying to find it. We couldn't even find a yellow bungalow. <laughs> oh, George, show these boys to the casting office, will you? Yes, sir. Gregory will take care of you. You brought your horse along? Sure. Say, how about a place around here to keep her? Uh, stables or something? Well, there ought to be some place on the back lot. George, take care of these boys, will you? Say, I'm in a rush now. I'll see you later, but glad to have you with us. <laughs> Well, George, what do you say we get going? Come on. Skeeter. This place is just full of fillies. You really gonna walk out, Miss Christmas? This time is for sure? Oh, I certainly am. They can't push me around like this. I'll teach them to have some respect for me. Why, look now the way I was insulted by that hideous extra. You saw that. Well, I didn't think it was a hideous. You don't what? Well, I didn't think you were so too hideous. Just wait till Mr. Johnson hears about it. May I come in? Well, you won't have to wait long. Here's Mr. Johnson's now. Go on, get out of here. Is that you, Vinnie, darling? Yes, dear. Oh, Finny, darling. Yes, yes, yes. I know, I know. They've been pushing you around again, and no one has any respect for you. Oh, it's been ghastly. You don't know what I go through. Being poured all morning by that rancid Don Courtney. And being poured out of some very nice camera angles, no doubt. I don't believe you care a bit. You're getting just like all the others, taking me for granted. Where am I to turn? What am I to do? Bravo. That's from The Angel in Red. Fourth sequence, scene 98. It was cut out after the preview at Long Beach. The sailors laughed. Now you're making fun of me. You, of all people. Oh! Murphy, how many times must I tell you to keep the pins out of my dresses? <laughs> and you. You got me into this business. I didn't want it, you know. I was doing all right in that hospital. I'll say you were. You were the prettiest nurse there. I can see you now all dressed in white. Nursing you back to health. Yes, now I've got to nurse you back to health. Well, I'm healthy. A healthy fool you made of yourself today. Oh, get off your rocking horse. You're not a child. You're holding up production. You're costing me money. All right, go ahead. Throw me to the wolves. Throw me to that creeping, crawling down Courtney. Oh, nonsense. This is the last picture you'll have to make with Courtney. Positively the last. Is that a promise, Finney? That's a promise. Come on, darling. Let's get back to work, shall we? Come on. Well, all right. Hey, Murphy. Yes, Miss Crystal. Bring my things down to the set. And if Roy Croft says anything, remember I gave you a good bawling out. But you didn't. Oh, come on. 
He looks all right, if he can talk. Oh, he can talk all right. Say something, Lank. Hello? He has a nice physique. Ought to look well in tails. Does he have evening clothes? Do you have evening clothes? Evening clothes? What do you mean? Clothes you wear at night. Afraid not. I always sleep in the raw. You ain't gonna test him that way, are you? Contact the wardrobe. We'll have him fitted up this afternoon. I'll meet you in the wardrobe after lunch. You know where the cafe is? Oh, I reckon we can find it. Come on, Lank. Evening clothes. Sleeps in the raw. Hmm. How's that? Don't you find a comfortable place for her? Huh? Oh, sure. Way up in the back lot. Will you see it, Lang? Peach of a place. Your hat, please? No, that's all right. I'll just take it in with me. You got the makings, miss? I beg your pardon. What do you mean? Uh, makings, you know. Roll your own. Oh. Well, we've got all kinds of cigars and cigarettes. Do you see anything you'd like? Yeah. And no smart cracks. Mind if I sit here, ma'am? All the tables seem to be full. No, just sit down. Thanks. What are you eating, ma'am? I believe it's known as a salad. And don't call me ma'am. Oh, I'm sorry, what'll I call you? Don't you know who I am? <laughs> well, I guess you're a movie star. You guess. Don't you work here? Not yet, I don't. I'm having a test made, though. Well, don't you ever go to picture shows? Yeah. Well, just when there's a western. Oh. You like westerns. <laughs> Gosh, they're so doggone funny. These movie westerns, I mean. Hey, do you work in these westerns? I don't remember seeing you in any. I am Crystal Wayne. Who? Crystal Wayne. W-A-Y-N-E. Wayne! They better put all the dishes away. There she goes. I'm glad to know you, Miss Wayne. My name is Garrett. Mike Garrett. I hope I haven't been any imposition to you. A what? You know, imposition. Have a cigar, Lane. Huh? Oh. Well, if it ain't a Palomino. <laughs> Say, is that your picture up there? I'm so sorry, Miss Wayne. I didn't know. Oh, just forget it. It won't happen again. You can bet on that. Oh, I'd like to take a punch at her. You're not alone. Well, how do you like it? Yeah, this is all right. Nice place you got for Ethel there. Hey, what's that over there? George says that's the New York Harbor, right in our front yard. We certainly get around, don't we? <laughs> Let's go in and see what's inside. Flowers, everything. Oh, boy. Well, here she is. Nice and homelike, huh? Yeah, it isn't bad at all. Ah, our first home in Hollywood. Yep, Hollywood. Wonder why that Crystal Wayne's mad at me. You know, she's kind of pretty. Ah, uh, she's just another filly. I don't know about that. She's got something there, something sort of special about her. <laughs> she ain't specially friendly. Maybe that was my fault. I sure wish I could make it up with her. Well, what are you waiting for? You know where she lives. Where's that? Well, we parked the outfit this morning. If you want to square things, why don't you just go and plank yourself down on her doorstep? Me on her doorsteps? Oh, no, no, I couldn't near do that. So you see, Miss Wayne, I'm sorry for everything, and I apologize. Apologize for what? Why, for all the ornery things I've... What kind of a performance are you giving out here? I'm sorry, ma'am. I was just getting up the right words to tell you how sorry I was for the way I've annoyed you today. Well, I should think you would. I suppose you can explain why you found it necessary to call me a horse. Why, Miss Wayne, I didn't... Don't you deny it? You called me a... a, a what was it, Murphy? A palomino. Yes. Oh, that. Gee, Miss Wayne, that was meant for a compliment. Horses to me are beautiful. And a palomino is just about the most beautiful horse there is. So when I see a beautiful blonde like you, why, palomino seems just like the only name for you. Well, well. 
That sounds kind of pretty. You see, Murphy, it was a compliment all the time. I told you he wasn't so hideous. Hey, then you're not mad at me? <laughs> of course not. I never was, really. Thanks. I feel better now. That's okay. You beautiful dope. Dope? Did you say dope? Yes, dope. You see, all men to me are beautiful, but they're the most beautiful of all of the dopes. So when I look at you, I just naturally think dope. Gee, thanks. Can I drop you someplace? Well, if it won't be too much trouble. Not at all. <laughs> all right now? Yeah. Gee, this is really a swell buggy. Like it, huh? Yeah. All right, Melvin. Pull the door. Do you live in Hollywood? Yeah, right here at the studio. You mean you live on studio property? Yeah, at present. How long has this been going on? Just since this morning. The back lot, Melvin. You're a funny person. I don't think I've ever met anyone like you before. Are you really a cowboy? Well, I reckon I am, Miss Wayne. I bet you're an expert rider, too. I'm the world's champion. Do you ever read Life magazine? Only when they give my pictures a spread. Say, I'll bet that's where I've seen you. Were you ever on the cover? No. Oh. I was. <laughs> Just me, nothing else. Really? May I touch you? <laughs> I Tell was... Me, Mr. <laughs> Go ahead. I was just going to say, is it hard to learn to ride? Well, I... What I mean is, I have some very important riding scenes next week, and, well, I don't know a thing about it. And here beside me sits an expert. Do you think you could teach me to ride? Well, I don't... Shh. Could you teach me to ride? Well, you can't learn in a few days not to be an expert, I mean. Oh, I wouldn't expect that, just to start me off. I have stables just full of horses, beautiful horses. You'd love them. Could we start tomorrow morning at my ranch? Well, I don't You'd know. You'd have to I get don't... up at the crack of dawn. I have a 9 o'clock call at the studio. Oh, that part's all right. I'm used to getting up early. Oh, fine. I'll send my station wagon for you at 5.30 in the morning. Okay with me, Miss Wayne. And uh, if you get tired of that Miss Wayne, you might try calling me Crystal. Crystal? <laughs> that name doesn't suit you. Oh, I suppose you can find a better one. Yeah. What? Chris. It's okay with me, you beautiful dope. Thanks. Sure have a handsome way out here. Never saw such stables. A birthday present from Mr. Johnson. I often get little things like this in appreciation for my work. You sure must like your work. What do I do now? Well, the first thing you do is get on the horse. <laughs> oh. I don't get it. Neither does he. He ought to be around here on Sundays and watch her play polo. <laughs> no, no. Here. It's all in the spring you give your body. You don't climb on. One good spring and you're on before the horse knows it. Wonderful. Here, go ahead, try it. There you are. These are the reins. I know that much. Yeah. <laughs> Hold them like this. Don't pull, just let the horse know you're there. Knees flat against the horse, just like you were holding $10 bills under there in a high wind. Ah, uh, these stirrups are too short. Oh, they aren't. I always... Uh, I, mean... I said they were too short. Yeah. How do they feel now? Fine. They were too short. Yes, I know. Well, what do I do now? Just go. The horse will know what you mean. This is wonderful. You're doing all right for a first lesson. Looks like you were born in a set. Thanks. How are those strips now? I think I'd like them a little shorter, the way they were before. Okay, I'll fix them for you. Hey! Help! Help, Blank!
are you all right? Chris, are you hurt? I'm all right. Just shaking up. You sure? Sure. I'm glad. Are you, Lank? Sure am. I might have been killed. Yeah, you sure might have. Oh, you saved my life. Oh, no, I didn't. Oh, let's pretend you did. Yeah, sure, I know. All right, why bother me with these things? Shoot around her till she gets here. What's the matter now? Roycroft again. Crystal Wayne hasn't shown up, and she had a call at 9. Well, it's only 9.20. Only 9.20? Do you realize what 20 minutes cost this studio in round figures? We won't go into that. But speaking of Crystal Wayne, this little bit will kill you. You know Johnson's cowboy? Yeah. Well, his pal Skeeter, you know that little cow hand? He called this morning, had a suggestion for Lank's first picture. Well? He suggested that Crystal Wayne would make a good leading lady for the cowboy. <laughs> Shooting high, wasn't he? I'd love to see the expression on that blonde blitzkrieg when she hears that one. Oh, you would, eh? Well, look at that. Well, I'll be a third term. Get ready, Miss Wayne's here. Hello, Tommy, how's tricks? She must be kidding. Who was it? Good morning, Bob. I hope I haven't kept you waiting. Why, not at all, not at all. I'm ready if you are. Call places. Places? Mr. Courtney? Good morning. Good morning. Here, let me fix this for you. I must be dreaming. If I am, don't wake me up. There, that's better. Well, what's come over you? Well, We'll try the clothes shop at the Roses, Crystal. Are you ready? Yes, darling. But thank you, Sterling. Oh, they're real. Mr. Johnson sent them to you. Thought he might want to use them in the scene. Oh, how sweet. How awfully sweet. Well, I don't know what's happened to her, but whatever it is, I hope it doesn't wear off. Who are you going to put in the lead of that? Well, I thought about three of... Here's a production report. Thank you. Well, hey, hey, look at this. Roy Croft finishes the Crystal Wayne picture next Monday, six days ahead of schedule. Now, do you think I was right? What do you know? That cowboy was an investment. Did you see the last test he made? The pioneer or the policeman? Either one. They're both terrible. Wouldn't it be awful if he made a good test and we had to do a picture with him? You have a degraded sense of humor. Come on. Don't be afraid of that microphone. I'm not afraid of it. Now, don't get excited, Garrett. Relax. Take a deep breath. Now exhale. Let your body relax. I said relax, not collapse. All right, wipe the perspiration off them and we'll take it. Now don't be nervous. Take it easy. Everything will be fine. Well, Mr. Johnson, are you uh, still like it? Looks pretty good to me. Take it easy. Just a second. Okay. Mr. Garrett, just uh, read the lines as uh, we rehearse them. All right, Mabel? Yes, Mr. Franklin. Start the cameras. Action! Gina, when is this going to stop? My nights have been sleepless. I'm losing weight. You're losing weight. We're both losing weight. We can't go on like this. Don't you know that, Gina? Night after night of this observed merry-go-round. We're losing, we're losing, we're... Uh, we're lost, all right. Cut! Well, Mr. Johnson... Uh, where'd he go? Weak stomach. I'm sorry. Well, let's try it again. Start the cameras. Action! We can't go on like this. We can't, we can't, we can't, we can't. I know we can't. Cut! Lunch! Back in an hour. Hello. Hello, Midgey. Hiya, Skeeter. This way, gentlemen. Hello. Oh, sit down. Oh, gentlemen, I'm sorry, but oh, it's you can... quite all right, Mary. Hi. 
How was the test? Oh, gosh, it was awful. May I have your order, please? Oh, don't be so modest. I bet it was swell. How do you like him all dressed up in this outfit? I think I like him better in cowboy clothes. So do I. Hank was telling me all about your stables. I like to see him sometime. Yeah, I sure wish Ethel could see them, too. Ethel? That's his horse. That's my Palomino. Oh. May I have your order now, please? I'd like for you to meet Ethel. She's a champion, she is. You know, you're sort of a champion yourself. Thanks, Lank. That's sweet. I don't know what half of these things are. Say, what's a Scotch woodcock? Oh, scrambled eggs with strips of anchovies. Huh? Fish. Oh, why don't they come right out and say it? Uh, what's a, a Salisbury steak? That's oh, hamburger. Hamburger? You see what I mean? <laughs> Take it easy, Skeeter. Could I have your order now, please? Uh, uh, you can bring me one of those uh, woodcocks. Uh, sc sc scotch. Well, I never saw anything like it before. Never. And I've looked at some pretty terrible tests in my time. Well, at least we weren't surprised. No. Johnson ought to stick to hospitals. At least he might dig up another Crystal Wayne. By the way, what is the situation on Miss Wayne? Incredible. Yesterday, she bought soda pop for the entire crew. That restores my faith in miracles. Yes? Mr. Roycroft on, too. Thank you. Hello. Yeah. Oh, she what? Well. Well, well. Well. If one of those wells comes in, we're rich. Yeah. Crystal Wayne again. What's she up to now? She's taking Roy Croft to lunch, and she wants her next picture to be a Western. She says she's tired of playing bad girls. <laughs> Greg, I'm just putting two and two together. And? Listen. Valuable blonde star is temperamental, hard to handle. She has tantrums on the set, slows up production, costs the studio thousands of dollars. She meets big, handsome cowboy. He makes her happy. She behaves on the set, speeds up production. The studio makes thousands of dollars and everybody's happy. Now, wouldn't you say the cowboy was worth something to the studio? Say a contract at a uh, hundred or so a week? You get more out of two and two than I ever did at the little red schoolhouse. <laughs> yes? Mr. Johnson's on his way in. Great Caesar, I forgot about Johnson. Good morning. Good morning, Kenny. Good morning, Mr. Johnson. I've just seen Garrett's test. Yeah? Well, we can't be right all the time. What do you mean, Finney? You've seen the test? Well, yes. We thought it was pretty good, didn't we, Greg? Better than average, better than average. Are you kidding? Oh, now, Finney, maybe you're looking at it wrong. For a first test, it shows great promise. I'd like to see some more of him. Maybe in some different types. Yes, that's it. Of course, he's not for drawing rooms. You really think he's got something? Definitely. Offhand, I can't say just what it is, but yeah. Well, perhaps I'm wrong. Maybe he has got some hidden talent that we know nothing about. I was ready to throw up the sponge. Oh, no, Finney, you're too hasty. You've got to give your discovery a chance, a chance to show what he can do. You leave that cowboy to us. Well, all right. What are you boys doing for lunch? There you are, a lunch invitation. I knew this was our lucky day. I'll pick you up at 12 o'clock. Fine, fine. Well, he went for it. But we're playing with fire, you know that, don't you? Playing with fire? Gil, old boy, we're bathing in it. Oh, well, Garrett. Garrett, you'll both enter on a cue and play the love scene right here on the stone. Now, let's have a good rehearsal. All right, come on. Your eyes, Murrieta, are... No, no, not Murrieta. Murrieta was a famous bandit. Marita, your little sweetheart. Now, come on, let's have a good rehearsal. Your eyes, Marita, are pools of shimmering blue. I could swim in the coolness of your eyes. No, look, Garrett, Garrett, can't you put more feeling into the line? Let me show you. Your eyes, Marita, are like pools of shimmering blue. Yeah, but her eyes are brown. Lunch. One hour. Don't worry, Lank. We've always got the rodeos. Gil, come with me now. we got to work fast. What's up now? Johnson just ran off all that cowboy's tests. Every one he's made. He's on his way over here now. Well, what about it? Imagine Johnson seeing those tests all at once. One at a time, he might be fooled, but all at once. Well, what'll I say to him? Just be non-committal. Bluff it through, you know. I'm no actor. I'm a producer. Good morning, Mr. Johnson. Here's where you produce. 
I've just had all the studio secretaries look at Lang Garrett's test. I wanted to get their reaction. Well, now, that was clever of you. They say he's cute. After all the trouble we've gone to, all they say is he's cute. Well, now, that's not so bad. If we can get 50 million American women to say the same thing, you've got a new star. Gil's right. You know, I think I know what the trouble is. Trouble? Yeah, the trouble with the test. It's that girl, um, Maybell. He needs somebody different, somebody to stir him up. Have you got anybody, Gilbert? Well, I don't know. How about it, Greg? Oh, I can dig up a dozen. There's Claire, there's Laura, there's Alice. Yeah, whatever became of Alice. Never mind. Wait a minute, I've got it. You'll think I'm crazy, but I know she'll do it. Who? Crystal Wayne. Uh, uh, Crystal Wayne? You mean the Crystal Wayne? Our Crystal Wayne? I'm sure she'll do it for me. And if there's anybody that can get something out of that cowboy, it's Crystal Wayne. Oh, but that's unheard of, a star testing with a newcomer. Gentlemen, this business is built on unheard of things. What was it we said about playing with fire? Well, it was your idea keeping that cowboy around. My idea? Who invited him here? Who phoned him long distance? Midge, call my secretary and tell her I'll be in projection room number one. Mr. Jones. Huh? Number one. But, Crystal, it isn't often that I ask you to do me a favor. I didn't say I wouldn't do it. I just want to know what it is first. I've been caught on that sight unseen proposition before. I want you to make a test with a new discovery of mine. What, another discovery, Finney? Brunette or redhead? This is a man. Oh, you interest me strangely. Well, I brought him out here, and I want to see him make good. It's a matter of pride with me. Now, really, Finney, you don't expect me to make a test with a newcomer. But as a favor to me, Do please. you realize who you're asking to do this? Whom, darling? All right, do you realize whom I am? Yes, darling, I know you're a star. That's why I need you. You know how to handle a leading man. And that's what this boy needs. I want you to play up to him. Now, take it easy, Finney. I won't do it. All right, Crystal, you win. It is asking too much, I suppose, for just a dumb cowboy. Cowboy? Yeah, Lank Garrett's his name. Lank Garrett? Well, we could change his name. Oh, yeah. All right, forget it. I'll get somebody else. Oh, no, wait a minute, Finney. I, I could do it, I guess. No, it's asking too much. Now, how often do you ask me to do you a favor? Just forget it. I'll do it, I tell you. I want to. Oh. Well, what a coincidence. There he is. Hey, Lang, come on over here. I want you to meet someone. Miss Wayne? Mr. Garrett? How do you do, Mr. Garrett? We've uh, met before, Mr. Johnson. Oh, uh, oh yes, I, I remember. It was in the cafe, wasn't it? Cafe? Well, that's fine. I've just arranged for you two to make a test together. Yeah, that's fine. Yes, isn't it? Well, if you two will excuse me, I'll lie down a little while before lunch. She's a great little girl. Sure is. Beautiful, too. Sure is. And a darn good actress. Sure is. Well, how about some lunch? Sure is. Come on. One day shooting lost for this crazy thing. I don't get it. Now, look, Bob, this wasn't my idea. It was Finney's. And if I want to give up my valuable time, why... But I... why out here? What's the matter with the test stage? But the cowboy, he, he has to have these natural surroundings. And you? I suppose you're a natural surrounding? No cracks, please. I'm sorry. I was just kidding. Get the cowboy. 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 You want me? Oh, hello, Chris. Hello, Lang. Uh, Mr. Garrett, do you know Mr. Roycroft? Hello, Mr. Roycroft. How do you do? See, Chris was swell of you to work in this test with me. Swell of you to give Ethel a break, too. She'll appreciate it. Have you met Ethel, Mr. Roycroft? No, I haven't. Where is this wonder horse of yours? She's right over there. Well, you better get her over here. We're ready to shoot. Oh, I can get her here in a hurry. She's plenty smart, she is. She can do anything you can think of. I'd like to see her do what I'm thinking of right now. Uh, let, let's go, huh? What did he say? Never mind. Ready, everybody? You know those lines yet? I think so. They sound off peculiar, though. Don't let them bother you. It's only a test. <laughs> I won't. Don't be nervous. I'm not nervous anymore. Hello, Ethel. 
Start your sound. We're ready, Mr. Roycroft. You know, I'm not nervous now like I was with Maybell. Roll your cameras. Action. It's going to be hard leaving all this. The clear blue of that heaven, the smell of the dust and the sage. I'll miss it all. And me, Slim. What about me? Won't you miss me a little? You? And you most of all. You are the blue heaven. You are the dust and the sage and the beauty and wonder of it all. It's noisy airplanes. Everything happens to me. Hold everything till it quiets down. I've been meaning to ask you about yesterday. Yesterday? Yeah. When I ran into you, you acted as if you'd never seen me before. What was the reason for that? It seemed the wisest thing to do. Somebody might wonder about us, I mean. Why? Don't you want anybody to know? Not everybody. Not yet. Maybe you don't feel about me. Not the way I do about you. I mean, enough that you don't care who knows about it. I do really inside. Wish I could believe that. Can't you? Oh, you're so beautiful and important and all that. You must be used to having men at your feet all the time. I don't want men at my feet. I want to look up at my men, like this. Maybe I'm wrong, but it... It seemed to me that yesterday you didn't want Mr. Johnson to know that you knew me, that you were afraid. I believe you're jealous of Mr. Johnson. Well, maybe I am. Oh, thank you. It's silly. It's all right now. We're ready to go. All right, ready, folks. Roll your cameras. Action. Going to be hard leaving all this. The clear blue of that heaven, the smell, of the dust, and the sage. I'll miss it all. And me, Slim. What about me? Won't you miss me a little? You? You most of all. You are the dust and the sage and the beauty and wonder of it all. Okay, Danny, let's go. I say, the light in that scene's very bad. It's too dark. You'll have to shoot it over. Your glasses, Mr. Johnson. What? Your dark glasses. <laughs> you are the blue heaven. You are the dust and the sage and the beauty and wonder of it all. Oh, if it is as bad act as it's noisy airplanes. Oh, no, no, no. This is the wrong take. This is where the plane came in. Why did they print this? I didn't order it. I don't know, Mr. Roy. Oh, let it go. It won't take a minute. We'll see it. But it's wrong. It's no good. We'll see it anyway. I've been meaning to ask you about yesterday. Yesterday? Yeah. When I ran into you, you acted as if you'd never seen me before. What was the reason for that? It seemed the wisest thing to do. Somebody might wonder about us, I mean. Why? Don't you want anybody to know? Not everybody. Not yet. Well, maybe you don't feel about me. Not the way I do about you. I mean, enough that you don't care who knows about it. I do, really, inside. Wish I could believe that. Can't you? Oh, you're so beautiful and important and all that. You must be used to having men at your feet all the time. I don't want men at my feet. I want to look up at my men. This is better than I expected. She certainly got what I wanted out of him. Maybe I'm wrong, but it seemed to me that yesterday you didn't want Mr. Johnson to know that you knew me, that you were afraid. I believe you're jealous of Mr. Johnson. Well, maybe I am. Oh, thank you. It's silly. See, what is this? What's she saying? Is this a joke? Oh, the fool's left the camera running. What? Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Johnson, but believe me, I... Never mind. I think I know someone who can explain this. Stop this thing! Get my agent on the phone. Yes, sir. You make it sound wonderful, Lank. I've got a beautiful place in Gila Valley. You love our ranch house, Chris. It's swell. I wish you'd go there with me. I'd like to get you out of all this. Would there just be you and me? That's right. Just the two of us. I'm afraid you'd have to get rid of Skeeter. I don't think he likes me. Oh, Skeeter likes you all right. He just thinks you're dangerous. He's right, darling. I am. <laughs> Murphy? 
Well, it's Mr. You-Know-Who. He's on his way over. Uh, you better go, Lank. Who is it? Mr. Johnson? Oh, please don't be difficult. This is something I've got to work out for myself. But, Chris, I feel like I... I've got feelings, too. Please believe me. I know best. Now will you go? All right. I'll go, but I don't like this. Lang, I want to have a talk with you. Well, later. You fella see Skeeter around here? No. Hello, cowboy. Right. Testing today? Not today. What's he doing? Oh, he's up to his old tricks again. He's got a microphone planted in the chorus girl's dressing room, and he's listening in on their talk. <laughs> well, I'll be darned. Want to listen, Garrett? No, no, some other time. Go on. It's not often you get an opportunity like this. Hey, is this coming from there? Right from that dressing room. Oh, oh my hat. So I says, what can you expect when you're practically through him at me? After all, you're such a helpless little thing. He swept me right off my feet. How, like this? Ow! Hey, do women really talk like that? You're listening. What do you think? Hello, girls. What's cooking? Hello, Maybell. What's cooking with you? Back with us again? I guess so. What happened to the test you were making with the cowboy? Oh, that. That was strictly a gag. Believe me, if I'd known about him, I'd never wasted my talent. Well, tell us about it. Well, it seems that Finney Johnson's girlfriend, little Chris... Go away. Uh-huh. She's all wrapped up in this cowboy, so they're keeping him around to make her happy. I guess they figure it's worth a hundred bucks a week and a couple of phony tests to keep that blonde blitzkrieg under control. <laughs> What's the matter, cowboy? They getting rough? Excuse me, fellas. I'll see you later. Hey, you know, some trouble's going on in there. I'm gonna tell you I'm just about to crash it with this thing. I don't know what to do anymore, you know. Is Johnson in there? Oh, is it you, huh? Yes, Mr. Johnson's in there, and his wife, Theo, and Miss Crystal's in a bigger way, too. Oh, he is, eh? Oh, now the trouble is really gonna start. I'm gonna get him out of here. You told me to play up to him, to bring out the best in him. What did you expect? Not as much as I got. Can I help it if I'm a good actress? What can you possibly see in that cowboy? What could I see in him? What did you see in him? You were the one that was so hopped up to have him make good. I was only doing you a favor. Do it for me, you said. Ha, ha. Do it for me, for old Finney. Ha. It's very funny. I'm not laughing. Well, I am. You thought we could take that greenhorn cowboy and make a ham actor out of him. Now let me tell you what I really think of him. I think he's the grandest, sweetest person I ever knew. And I'm in love. In love. Do you hear that, Finney? For the first time in my nasty, ill-tempered life, I'm in love. And he's in love with me, the poor dear. I haven't had nerve so far to tell him what he's getting, but I will now. And if he still wants me to go to that ranch of his in the Gila Valley, I'm going. And you and the consolidated pictures can go jump in the Los Angeles River. And I hope there isn't any water in it when you do. But why, Lake? I don't understand. What's up? Why are we leaving? I, I like this place. Stop pestering me and do as I tell you. Well, all of a sudden from... I know what it is. It's that blonde, ain't it? If you ask me one more question, I'll break your... Finish packing, I'll get Ethel. Finish packing, pack this, pack that. Now Jed gets himself stuck on a blonde. He could feel a big star and make him big money. Maybe I could have had a buffalo dog for it. No, but take me to Mr. Garrett's place in the back lot. Yeah, and hurry. Looking for someone, Miss Wayne? Yes, Mr. Garrett. Oh, they packed up and cleared out some time ago. Are you sure? Why, yes. I saw them leave, so I came down here to lock up the place. Oh, my heavens. Murphy, they've gone. <laughs> Thank you. 
didn't eat a thing. What's the matter? You on a hunger strike? I'm all right. Quit nagging. All right. Okay. Forget it. If you want to go back to the rodeos, it's Jake with me. We'll always get along. Stop worrying. Who's worrying? My appetite's all right. Do you hear what I hear? Yeah, it sounds like a car. It don't sound like horses' hoofs. Who is it? Don't you recognize that car, Skeeter? Well, cut my legs off and call me shorty. Howdy, Crystal. I mean, uh, Miss Wayne. Hello, Skeeter. What are you doing here? Well, I came to find out what you're doing here. I'm here because it's where I belong. Is that any way to talk to a person who just walked out on her whole career? Oh, Lank, what happened? You're asking me what happened. That's very funny. Uh, shall I get your luggage, Miss Wayne? Yes. Leave everything in the car. Miss Wayne's not staying. Now, is that Western hospitality and on a cold night like this? It's warm tonight, the warmest night we've had. It was cold last night, Link. But it's miles to the nearest town. At least put us up for the night. You win. I'll get your bags. Are there any more bags? Yeah, there's an old one in the back seat. Oh. Mr. Garrett. On porch. Lovely here, Lank. Really beautiful. I've always liked it. You said a moment ago that the reason you came back here was because it's where you belonged. That's why I'm here, and I want to prove it. You won't have time. You're leaving tomorrow. How'd you find this place, anyway? Oh, I just found the Gila Valley and followed it. Why didn't you tell me it was spelled with a G? G-I-L-A, Gila. Everybody knows that. It's Spanish. You know what yo te amo means in Spanish? No, what? It means I love you. You know what buenas noches means in Spanish? No, what? Good night. Skeeter will show you where you bunk. Don't mind. I think I'll sit out here for a little while. I take bags. You've got them, brother. Hey, where are you going? I'm going back to town. You don't think I'm going to stay here and get scalped, do you? <laughs> He's a sissy. He don't know, but the Indians don't scalp people no more. <laughs> don't they? There's your map, and there's no Gila Valley in New Mexico. Are you sure she said Gila when she blew up that day? Well, that's what it sounded like. The research department said it's on the map. Gila Valley, spelt G-I-L-A, Spanish. Here it is. We've been looking right at it. G-I-L-A. How do you like such a language? Well, I've wasted enough time. I'm going to leave tonight. Let me see that map. G-I-L-A. I came in to... 
Yes, Lake. To I'll tell you that. What is it, Lake? That. That radio's too loud. Like you've got to talk to me. Say something. No. Well, at least you're talking to me anyway. There's nothing more to say. Why don't you just leave here? Oh, I know there's a lot I shouldn't even ask to be forgiven for. But you never know how these things are going to turn out. You never know that just by meeting someone, that someday that someone will mean everything in the world to you. You couldn't know that right off, could you? Could you? You'd plan things differently. You'd be honest, clean and clear, right from the start. Oh, Lank, you ought to be able to see that if you really love me like you said you did once. Well, what do you think I ran away for? Well, what do you think I came after you for? To, to watch him in fences? Oh, Lank, you stubborn dope. That's what you called me that first day. Please, may I be your Palomino again? <laughs> you see, Ethel is jealous. Don't you think you'd better tell her about, about us? Let her see for herself. Let's get back to the house. Oh, I'm so happy, Link. This is the way I've always wanted it. Just you and me out here, away from everything. Nothing will ever come between us again. You're walking out on your whole career. You sure you know what you're talking about? What do you think? They ought to be back any minute now. No, I'm in no hurry now that I know she's here. What's going on down there? Looks like they caught up with you. You don't look any too surprised. What do you mean? You didn't know they were coming, of course. You didn't tell them where you were going or just how to find it. Blake, you surely don't think that I have... I don't know what to think where you and Hollywood are concerned. I get in trouble thinking. I'm going to see what this is all about. Yep, here they come, right over there. Well, here are the runaways at last. Nice work, Crystal. You found him for us. What do you mean by that? You ran out at the wrong time, Lank. You just made a very fine test and I had a contract all ready for you when suddenly no cowboy. Why, if it hadn't been for Crystal here, we never would have found you. What's all this stuff you're cluttering up my ranch with? Newsreels and still pictures with the greatest publicity stunt of the year. The whole country's been looking for Crystal Wayne. And when they find out where she fled to, a few pictures of her in the arms of her beloved, and boy, you're a cinch to become the greatest romantic team on the screen. Finney, what are you raving about? What's the meaning of all this? It's plain enough, I get it. Now, don't let on like you don't understand it. You know, I've got to hand it to you two. You work as well together as you do separately. Like, you don't know what you're saying. I had nothing to do with this. Finney, tell him this minute this was not my idea. I had no part in it. Well, do you think he'd believe it? At least you've got good sense. You know when to stop acting. Now, if you'll all get out of here, I'll be much obliged. Skeeter, get these people out of here. Come on, you all of you, get out of here. Anything, please do something. Stop him. Uh, it's no use, honey. That boy is not for you. Well, what are you waiting for? You heard what the boss said. Not a bunch of you. Get this stuff packed up and get out of here. Will you? Get ready. Miss Wayne is here. Good morning, Miss Wayne. You can have it. Uh oh. Good morning, Miss Wayne. You can have it too. Uh oh. Good morning, Crystal. It's foggy outside and cold, so what's all this ballyhoo about the morning? Uh-oh. Good morning. What, you too? Can't anybody think of anything else to blabber about? Can you uh, help me with this tie? Fix it yourself, sweetheart. Who do you think I am, your butler? Your flowers, Miss Crystal, they're real. What, are these darn things alive? You know they make me sneeze. Uh-oh. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's get going. Good morning, Mr. Jones. <clears throat> Oh, hello, Mr. Johnson. Having a little trouble? A little trouble. Only one more scene to finish the picture, and look at the mood she's in. Well, forget that scene. We'll probably never use it anyway. Close the picture. You really mean that? Close the picture. Close the picture? Uh, Freddy, 
Close the picture. 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 Hooray! Hooray. Here, beautiful. I want these to smell you. I wish I could make you see it my way. It's no use, Finny. I'm through. Well, you're probably right. It's been a tough struggle, and maybe you're wise to quit while you're at the top and not experience that sliding feeling, losing your public. Oh, don't give me that talk. No, I mean it. You know, darling, what you need is a holiday. How about South America? No, my pictures never made money there. They'd probably shoot me on sight. Bermuda? No. Alaska? No. Well, there's always Honolulu. No. You sound like a travel poster. What's the matter with the USA? What's wrong with New York? You like New York? I didn't say that. I asked what was the matter with it. New York's not a bad idea. You could see some shows and buy yourself some new clothes. I'll let you know later. Get out of here now, will you? All right, I'm going. Finny, wait. I'll go. Maybe it's what I need. Ah, uh, now you're talking more like your old self. You know, darling, everything I've been doing, I've been doing for your own good. Now will you get out? Get out of here before I break down and forgive you? Bye. Phineas Johnson and Crystal Wayne left for New York at dawn today. Although they refuse to make any statement, it looks, at long last, like wedding bells for Finney and Crystal. Blank. They have promised to phone yours daily as soon as they make up their minds. Blank. So, Guess what I just heard on the radio. It's about Crystal Wayne. Well, what about her? What do you think she's going to do? I don't know and I don't care. I don't want to hear anything about Crystal Wayne. But this is awful. Well, what's wrong? She's eloping with Mr. Johnson. The man on the radio said so. They're off on a plane to New York. The man on the radio said it sounded like wedding bells. Well, what if it does? Oh, like, we can't let her do that. The plane makes a stop in Albuquerque. What do you say we take a run in and just say hello? Now, look here, Skeeter. Miss Wayne knows what she's doing. How do you know she does? I know that's all, and I don't want to hear any more about it. But, like, all you've been doing is... Skeeter! Why don't you keep your nose out of things? All right. All right. Hey, Wally, pull up a chair. We got heap big trouble on our hands, Wally. You remember that beautiful blonde lady that was here? Mm -hmm. Well, the boss is in love with her, and she's in love with the boss. But she's gonna marry somebody else, you know, just too stubborn, had a fight. You know what a fight is. <laughs> Did you ever have any trouble like that with your tribe? Oh, sure. Me and Chief want same woman for squaw. Yeah, how'd you settle it? We have fight, me and Chief, big fight. And you got the squaw? I get hospital. Oh, that's too bad. Uh-uh, good for Wani. Yeah, how? Squaw feel bad for Wani, come to hospital, see me in bed, plenty sick. I get well, she my squaw. Hospital fine place, fix them up quick. Yeah, I'm afraid the hospital's out. Or is it? She felt sorry for you, huh? <laughs> Peter, what's the matter? What's happened? Why did you warn me? Hello, Miss Wayne. You're on your way to New York, aren't you? Forget about that. Why did you warn me? Oh, I thought you'd like to know about Lance. What's the matter with him? Is he all right? Well, doctor says he's doing as well as can be expected. I think he has an even chance. The doctor? What do you mean? Well, his leg. Pretty serious infection. Oh, what happened? A bee stung him. Clear to the bone. Didn't look like much at first, but complications set in. Oh, how awful. Does he have a good doctor? Only doctor we could get was Ethel's. A veterinary? Sure, but he's plenty good doctor, all right. He's pulled Ethel through more than once. But for Lank, what does he say about his leg? He said he had a cure for it. If worse comes to worse. If worse comes... What kind of a cure? Amp amp amputation, that's what he said. Oh, no, not amputation. Not my beautiful Lank. Who's taking care of him? The Navajo's with him. Wani. 
What, that savage? Oh, I've got to see him. I can't let them amputate. I'll phone Los Angeles for doctors. How soon can I get to the ranch? How far is it? It's only a little ways. Oh, good. Where's the phone? It's right over here. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Don't you think you'd better wait till you get to the ranch to phone? No, it might be too late. Get me the long distance operator, please. Yes, ma'am. And get me a long drink of something strong. You are, miss. Thank you. Stewardess? Yes, Mr. Johnson. Where's Miss Wayne? I don't know, sir. She got off at Albuquerque. Albuquerque? Yes, sir. New Mexico. I think I know what's happened to Miss Wayne. I'm sorry, sir. All right. Stewardess? Yes, sir. Have you ever had a screen test? Huh. Uh-huh. Uh-uh. special pedigree. I guess you call it a mongrel. I put it together myself out of a bunch of old parts. Well, can't you make it go any faster? Sure, I can make it go faster. Well, make it go faster, then. Uh-uh. Why not? It'll just be a bunch of old parts again. Oh, Skeeter, why didn't you bring the packet? Nobody drives a packet but Lank himself. If he ever drives again. Oh, please, Harry Skeeter, please. Poor Lank. Slept in days. Boss sleep good every night. Oh, what's the... both of you think of Lank? No catch him. Shh, 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 shh. Shut the door. Which one is it? Uh, oh, it's this one. <clears throat> he must be suffering in his sleep. Oh, I can't bear it. You? It's Chris, darling. Don't get excited. Just rest. I'm here to take care of you. I am dreaming. No, you're not, Lank. It's her, and this is me, a skeeter. <laughs> Remember? Yeah, what's going on here? Where'd you come from? Please lie down, darling. I know it's terrible, but I phoned Los Angeles for a bone specialist and surgeon. Does it hurt very much, your leg? My leg? What's wrong with it? Please, darling, lie down. Everything's going to be all right. But I am all right. Dog, God, stop wrestling, will you? I want to get out. But you can't, Lank. You mustn't. Why not? Say, if this is a dream, wake me up. And if it isn't a dream, stop pushing me around. Please, Lank. Are you crazy? What's the matter with him? He's delirious. Been this way for days. Skeeter, are you crazy, too? Yeah, yeah, you see? Oh, oh let his me legs. go. Oh, his legs. No, please relax, Lank, please. Okay, I'll relax if you'll only tell me what this is all about. Yeah, that's better. Oh, Lank, I'll never leave you again, even if they amputate. I'd rather have you with one leg better than any man with two. One leg, me? I've had enough of this. Now, what's this all about? Well, you're standing up. Certainly I'm standing. 
But your leg, Skeeter, he can walk. Sure I can walk. Why shouldn't I walk? So he can. It's a miracle. That's what it is. A miracle, Miss Wayne. Just having you here beside him has made him well again. Something tells me. Yeah, and me too. Now, wait a minute. I can explain everything. I had to get you two together some way. I thought if I told you he was sick, everything would be all right. Everything is all right, isn't it, Why, you little worm. Wait a minute. Let me handle this in my own way. This is a man's job. You're going to thank me someday, believe me. You're going to thank me. I hope. Hey, let me out of here. I'll be back when you cool off. I'll stop him. Oh, don't, Lang. Why? Say, did you mean that about me with one leg better than any man with two? Yes, I did. Well, how do I stand with two legs, Palomino? Oh, you beautiful dope. <laughs> 